Welcome to another edition of the ID Video Market Report. I'm Anna Wells. And I'm Mike Hockett. Here are this week's top stories in distribution. Fastenal scored some exposure this week on our website for reasons good and not so good. The mega distributor, number 12 on this year's ID Big 50 list, announced that it had acquired certain assets of Spokane, Washington-based Fasteners, Inc., a regional and construction supply distributor with locations in Washington, Idaho, Oregon, and Montana. The transaction is expected to close by the end of October. Founded in 1961 in Spokane, Fasteners, Inc. sells a broad range of industrial supplies in addition to its focus on fastener products. Its presence includes 13 store locations, and the company anticipates 2015 revenue of approximately $36 million. In other news, last Thursday, the U.S. Department of Labor said that Fastenal was found to have discriminated against certain job applicants who sought general warehouse positions at two of its distribution facilities in Indianapolis and Atlanta. As a result, Winona, Minnesota-based Fastenal has offered 171 job positions to applicants in Indianapolis and Atlanta and will pay $1.25 million in back wages and interest to the applicants affected. The Department of Labor's Office of Federal Contract Compliance Programs, who conducted the investigation, said Fastenal did not admit liability and that the violations occurred while Fastenal received more than $35 million in government contracts for its products. And finally, as if they haven't had a busy enough week, Fastenal has just announced another piece to the management shakeup puzzle. Fastenal said Tuesday it had found a new CEO. Daniel Flornes, who has been Fastenal's chief financial officer since 1996, will become president and CEO effective at the start of 2016. Flornes immediately succeeds Will Oberton, the former CEO who recently returned to lead the company in an interim capacity. Oberton will continue to be chairman after Flornes takes the top job. Speaking of new CEOs, last week we reported that Wolseley may be on the hunt for a new chief executive. The Evening Standard, a London-based newspaper, reported that Wolseley's board is searching for a new group chief executive to replace Ian Meekins, but the new chief is not expected to be announced until after the first of the year. Meekins, who has been group chief executive since 2009, has restructured and transformed the company following an extensive expansion program begun by his predecessor, Chip Hornsby. The company had expanded rapidly, but was severely impacted by a sharp drop-off in construction activity. In the restructuring, Meekins reassessed and closed a number of branches. Those actions, combined with stronger building activity in Europe and the U.S., has led to a nearly fourfold increase in Wolseley's stock price. In other Big 50 news, Worth Group has added Des Moines Bolt to its portfolio of companies. Worth Des Moines Bolt is now part of the industry division as a member company of Worth Industry of North America, or WINA, for which the company is projecting sales of $700 million in 2016. Worth said that with locations in Iowa, Missouri, and Nebraska, Des Moines Bolt has more than 35 years of experience supplying a vast array of industrial fastener products and a variety of services including EDI, barcoding, kitting and packaging, inventory management, delivery services, and more. This issue actually comes up repeatedly when we talk about the barriers to e-commerce. It's definitely easier said than done, which is why a lot of businesses don't even want to try to take it on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week.